Good day everybody. I was too lazy to put up the camera and the mic and it's just a hassle sometimes so I hope you don't mind the cell phone quality. It's just for this little intro yak so. Today we're gonna go a little bit more metal and we're gonna check out a solo by Michael James Romeo on the Divine Wings of Tragedy. It's the first solo that comes along in the song. It's a 24 minute song so there's a few in there. It starts at 3 minutes and 10 seconds. First I'm gonna show you the solo with the transcription, uh, which I played myself. And then we're, we'll go over the theory kind of behind it and the chords or the riff. And yeah, let's dive in. Let's see what's going on here. First, I want to take a look at something that happens in the beginning of the song. There's first like this uh, choral thing, which is also really cool. And then after that, like a minute and a half into the song, we get this riff and then all kinds of stuff starts to happen. But let's check out the riff first. And so on and so forth. Now that seems kind of like something I heard before. You know, this little thing of a jig, which was written like a hundred years ago. Little influential piece. No, it. I think it's it's um, cool. They do put in a lot of classical repertoire into their songs. This is a little more, um, how do you call it, paraphrasing. And they also they also have like some literal Mozart of or Verdi things they uh, they put in their songs. But I thought that that was cool. It's also cool how they they do have like uh, th these substructures like Meshuggah always does too. Like this riff is in seven, but the melody is like this pattern of four beats, two beats, four beats, two beats, and then they make it fit. And then we have this e, uh, A flat major chord over the C. So I think uh, I thought that was kind of cool. Now for the solo section, this is the riff that's going on underneath. And that is also like a substructure thingy because this is in 4-4, four, four, but there is one pattern. Like this is one iteration or one like one full length of the pattern and then it repeats so it's six eight a six eight pattern which uh, creates some rhythmic displacement and interest and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah and then the final bar they do something slightly different and then they can go back to the beginning cool this is by the way written in e minor but they're tuned down to d so this should sound like a whole step down Always with the alternate tunings. And then the solo. There are a couple of things that go on, like harmonically speaking. It's pretty interesting. It's a lot of D diminished or D minor six things going on, actually. He starts in E minor, but then he pretty quickly goes into this D minor six or B minor seven flat five. Thing, whatever you want to look at however you want to look at it of course like the it does make sense 
to have D minor because we have this F in the in the chords, so it's kind of like a Phrygian thingy or Locrian, whatever. It has a flat too, so it's it's a great color, great sound, minor six, and then this is something that recurs a couple of times as well the interplay be between the b flat and the b natural so the, the flat five and the natural five of the e minor and d minor seven just literal arpeggio d minor six then we go into d diminished it goes to also literally a diminished arpeggio we stay with the diminished sound and then here he all of a sudden starts playing oh starts playing like this d sharp along with it so now we're in e harmonic minor which is again a nice color to switch over to then we're back into D minor and then he like planes into D diminished, which he then repeats an octave lower. And then again, we're here into this D minor six thing. It's while I was doing my edit, I realized I was being an idiot and I'm talking about this next line being in D minor six and D diminished and blah, 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 but it, it's it's completely wrong well not completely it's actually in a harmonic minor but it's starting from d so it's actually dorian sharp four so it says d minor six in the in the sheet but now you know it's my it's my boo boo he does a lot of repeating patterns in another octave so what happens here happens here an octave higher and then we get this uh tapping bit which is again one pattern played in three different octaves if you're wondering about the these groupings it's all just to make it fit if you hear it it's like <laughs> it kind of lands here and it kind of lands there but this really lands there and this so we're we're really back in time there so all if if you hear it you want to play it you just copy what he does he, you approach it by approximation but if you want if you want to write it down you're not gonna meticulously go through it with a microscope and and put every note where it lands it's like it's this is the idea that's what's most important and of course these uh these notes are also tapped but with the with the index index finger it's a hammer on from nowhere so we have d minor diminished ish thingy blah 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 and then here we he kind of goes in like e7 e d e d blah 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 um g sharp b and then which he resolves to a minor and then here we have once again a repeating pattern spread across different octaves analyzing this harmonically to the chords doesn't really make sense it's just it's it's just a pattern you don't have to think too much about it it's kind of it's sort of like an e tonality and then a d and then back to E, back to D, it's it's the same thing, just down an octave here again, and we just land on E. So it's not a, um, it's not one scale or a key center where he just plays a pattern through, it's, it's just one pattern shifting through different keys. Well, just two keys. In the end, it's all about how it sounds and what effect it creates. So yeah, that's about it. I thought it was cool. It's the first time I actually analyze a metal solo, so I thought, why not? 
I hope you liked this video. If you did, you can leave a thumbs up, you can put it in the comments, just give us some feedback so we actually know you liked it. And if you want, you can also join our Patreon, we have lots of extra stuff there. Uh, we also do uh, private lessons through it, so go check it out if you're interested. And that's about it for today, so take care and see you next time.